morning everybody today we are going to speak to mr sandeep narula esc chairman and mr gurmeet singh esc as known as the electronics computer software council they have been into this uh, software it promoting uh, since long time and they are mainly promoting the msc companies based in india they have their upcoming conference in the month of january and we would like to start our conversation with mr sandeep that given the hype of the shows how do you feel that the impact is going to be there on the it sector in the upcoming conference well thank you for the podcast uh, in fact talking of the shows that we have namely india soft and india electronics expo these are the shows in tune with the tech world of today and they are not only focused in india they are focused towards the global market in fact we have enabled the show in such a way that we have these two concurrent shows happening in india in in heart of india focusing on the global market where you are going to see large participation from overseas there would be a lot of delegates business partners coming and these are the shows which are in the right tech world and in the right spirit all right electronics as we all know is a very sunrise industry and its growth is humongous how has esc contributed uh, and the electronics expo also contributed uh, to the growth in the country well i think it's very valid the electronics is the sunrise sector and currently we are somewhere in couple of 100 billion dollars as far as the electronic manufacturing is concerned uh but our consumption is much larger therefore we are in the right time right place to focus on the electronic uh which would not only give the employment to our large population but would also be a revenue generator would also add to the growth of our country and given the size of the electronics a uh, worldwide and the consumption of electronics per capita uh we believe that electronics is one sector which would lead the sectoral performance uh in the overall contribution all in terms of uh, gdp in terms of employment and also making india self reliant so we strongly believe that show like this will be a real game changer for our country even uh, i personally felt when covid happened that it was only the it industry which really made it function and things we could still get it at home and so many things happened i think so it has been a very big boon for us and we all thank actually it for helping us live our lives easily at times and uh, we are able to do much more things than what we could do at that time uh gurmeet ji you have been seeing this show from day 1 in 2000 from this upcoming is in january you have seen the whole part can you explain us the journey from day 1 until today because at that time it started as an closed event and now it is an open door event so over to you gurmeet ji uh i guess it's very exciting and amazing journey so far and um, i remember when we started uh with uh, just uh, 50 companies 50 exhibitors who were there with us and uh, around say similar kind of a uh, foreign delegates who joined us from a very select uh, you know continents uh we have grown from that level to a level here now then uh, you know we have uh, last 23rd edition we have over uh, 45000 uh, visitors business visitors uh, at the show and uh, uh, very happy to you know share that we have the show was well attended by almost uh, uh, 700 uh, foreign delegates Mm-hmm. covering 18 global countries right so that is something you know we are proud of and uh, the journey so far and uh, we had uh, almost 200 plus budding entrepreneurs 
showcasing our area of innovations in the technology domain. So the show has gone really big and better and uh, you know, um, uh, as we say, uh, the success of the show is always counted by uh, what the feedback is from its stakeholders. And I'm very happy to share here that uh, there's a big laurels that the event has attracted, uh, particularly for the last two years, when we started from closed door to the open door uh, activity. Uh, thanks to our current leadership, we the show has totally transformed you know, making it bigger and be better and giving actually a value to its stakeholders. Right. You know, we have come to a, uh, you know, a place where the show is totally sold out. If, um, if I talk about the 23 edition or even if I say talk about the 24 edition, uh, we are totally sold out and that shows that the purpose for which the show was created is actually delivering the value now. So I can say then with the complete uh, conviction that the birth happened in 2000 and now it is an adult in 24 years that it has grown that much and obviously it's the hard work of the leadership and everybody else. Uh, what is the this year's expected outcome? What you see is going to come out or type of agreements which could be signed up and what are the type of agreements which get signed up uh, and what people from different foreign companies come and look to that what would they like to buy as a product from India? Uh, I would say that taking forward the success uh, which we experienced in the last two editions, uh, we are working hard uh, and making a new features uh, which are of interest to our stakeholders. Like this year's, we are making sure of guided tools uh, to make sure that the foreign buyers who are coming here, because the show has gone bigger, and actually, uh, just to make sure that they are in touch with the right companies, we have introduced our guided tools, wherein we are providing a dedicated interpreter in their local language to take them around in the show at the first go. So right. that in the first day of the first day, in the first half of the day, we take them around mm. at individual booth, very quickly brief them about what this particular Indian company is offering in a very, very crisp and clear uh, one or two lines. So that, and then we leave them on their own. So that after that, they mark uh, on their calendar that, you know, this company is of interest to them and they can schedule their appointments with that company uh, and meet them, network with them in the rest of the day. The other thing that we are doing is pre-assign B2B meets. Mm -hmm. So on the next day, we are uh, working out uh, a pre-assign B2B meets with them. We are creating a small booklet, circulating it to the, our stakeholders to our exhibitors and just asking them what is your preference? Which are the buyers you want to meet uh, so that we can organize a specific pre-assigned fixed B2Bs for you. Right. So that eventually, you know, making sure that the buyers who are coming, we are able to fully utilize their visit, their time, their efforts and delivering the value to our stakeholders so that they are able to establish a first-hand contact with the foreign buyers and then can take it over in the days to come. So these are the, some of the new features that we are adding on. Right. Uh, ESC, as you all now know, is a sector-specific uh, council under the Ministry of Electronics and IT. Uh, what is the kind of support you get from the government so that it enhances the value and the government's thought processes are also taken forward? Uh, of late, we have seen you know, the government is very supportive, uh, you know, whether you take it in terms of uh, the policies, uh, they are very uh, uh, prompt in listening to you, uh, you know, asking on a regular basis, what are the problems you faced, what the policy corrections that you want the government to take over. So they are very atten uh, attentive to the needs of the industry. And if I talk about the financial part, you know, the government is equally responsible and very attentive uh, to the needs of the industry, like uh, the Market Access Initiative is one program which is well accepted and well, uh, you know, uh, very uh, important for the industry. Under that MEI scheme, the government is funding uh, the Indian uh, industry uh, in their global outreach programs. The council itself is taking almost 12 to 15 activities globally 
and even the current event that India Electronics Expo and the India Soft is well covered uh, by the government initiative, and uh, you can uh, see the. It is particularly for the uh, small and medium companies that the government wants to host buyers and bring them over to the Indian doorsteps, so that these companies who are not able to walk through our global markets uh, and travel to those markets, those buyers are brought into the country and make sure that these are networked and introduced to the small and medium companies and so that our exports, our business are, uh, you know, grow in these markets. So this is some of the initiatives uh, that the government's uh, policies and financial assistance is making the enabler uh, and uh, helping those uh, Indian IT companies and to grow in the global market. Uh, Sandeep ji, you are the leader and you are showing everybody the way. And IT is also promoting and your council is also promoting the new and innovative ideas. And people have been talking about it and now it's becoming a kind of an acceptance. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts on these innovative technologies? Which are these ones? And how do you see the future of these newer technologies? Well, before I answer this, I will go back to uh, your statement where you mentioned that uh, the show was born in 2000 and yeah. now it is attained the adulthood yeah. uh, in the 24th year. I would like to add, in fact, the real adulthood was attained only after COVID. Right. When we took sweeping decisions, we brought in sweeping changes in the format of the show. The format of the show since the beginning was a closed door right. and also a standalone event. Right. The event used to move from city to city and from month to month. So there was no uniformity. There was no fixed character of the show. So firstly, we brought the change. We decided that the show has to be in a standard format, in a specific month, in a specific city. So after a lot of deliberations, we chose that we keep the show in Delhi in the month of March. However, that has been pre for now to January. So in future, we are likely to have in January. Because we wanted people to plan for the show's visit. And they should know, okay, this show would be in this month in this city. Every year, year on, year on. So like all the bigger shows happen. So this was one change, although we faced some resistance, but we convinced our uh, adversaries, our friends, everyone, and they also eventually came on board. Another big decision was taken, was to have a convergence of shows. So that right. we build the show in such a way that it becomes a global show. Right. When India is aspiring to be a leader in the tech world, as Modi ji rightly said, now look for the world, be conscious of the quality so that uh, vocal for global or vocal to global, uh, how do we do it? Local to global, I'm sorry. So how do we do it? Uh, such shows would add it to this uh, vision of our Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi. So that decision was taken in 2021 and here we are in 24. Uh, this show has actually transformed into a scale which is a scale of a global show uh, which is uh, attracting a lot of footfall from the uh, domestic businesses, domestic partners, domestic buyers and also attracting a lot of delegates from the uh, global markets. And I'm very happy to share that the efforts of ESC Secretariat has actually brought the fruit now. We are going to see record partners coming from record countries. So as of now, we are estimating that about 80 countries would be participating and there would be a lot of partners, potential buyers, who would be looking for Indian products, Indian services, 
uh, as buyers, as partners, as joint venture, as licensed manufacturing, as setting up their base in India, as as uh, a producer in India of their product, their technology. So we are actually very proud that we have brought the show to this scale. And I must congratulate uh, Gurmay Singh EDSC, uh, his passion, uh, his drive, and his hard work. And also the whole of the team ESC who is behind the show, success. So this I thought uh, should be known to everyone. Now I come back to your question, uh, wherein you are saying that uh, how we see India to play a key role in the uh, innovative. innovative technology, the emerging technology. You know, see, the time has come when everything would be driven by technologies. Now currently you are seeing artificial intelligence. Its impact on our, its impact on our lives. You are seeing the impact of uh, new technologies like blockchain, yeah. big data, IoT, so much so that now the medtech is coming out so aggressively that the whole surgery is being done by robots using the technology, using the artificial intelligence, using blockchain. So how do we bring India into a league where we drive the things? Not only that we want to add value to our numbers, but also we are a country of large population of 140 billion. We have large need for medical. We have large need for regulating our economy, growing our economy. How do we do it? If we are dependent on the technologies from overseas, it cannot be the success. It cannot be meeting the aspirations that we have. So therefore, this show is very focused show on all these emerging technologies. And what we are doing is we are bringing startups who are young guys falling short of certain elements to be successful. So we are bridging those uh, uh, shortages, bringing, bringing those talents into the show by having the startup pavilion, startup zone. And this is how we are going to make this show uh, delve into success stories, wherein the partners or the buyers coming from overseas, and they how do they join hands and fill up the gaps that the startups may be facing. So all the technologies are covered. And along with that, as uh, Gurmeet mentioned, we are also having a lot of B2B meetings, a lot of pre-engagements so that this show of three days could be a real game changer in the, in the entire tech world of the globe. Off the cuff, one question which is coming to me. Beta is going to come of age in next three, four years for, to, for getting married, which I'm correlating to the IT sector. Any thoughts of what do you see in next 5 to 10 years happening in the industry? Well, uh, if uh, you would uh, be watching the sector and the government's initiative, especially the vision of uh, Honorable Prime Minister, wherein he first time uh, asked to be ready for a long-term vision document. So all these sectors have been working on vision 2047. Yeah. So we as ESC has also worked on Vision 2047 document and we have also made a short term vision document for Vision 2030. You will be uh, thrilled to see that the India's GDP in 2047 is estimated to be about $35 trillion, right. uh, which from the current level of $4 trillion will be a huge jump in the next 24 years. And electronic sector is one sector, as you also said, sunrise sector. So it's in two sense, it is a sunrise sector, uh, which is likely to contribute more than two digit percentage to the overall GDP of our country. So when I say that uh, sunrise sector contributing in two digits, so you say it may be 10% or maybe higher. 
to the overall GDP of $35 trillion, so which will transform to about $3.5 trillion. Uh, these are, again, estimates uh, because 2047 is a long-term vision. So assuming this is $3 trillion plus in 2047 from the current uh, $200 billion or maybe less, uh, we are now in a short term aiming for $300 billion. So say, assuming that uh, forward looking $300 billion to $3,000 uh, billion, billion. So this will be a tenfold jump. Uh, this will be phenomenal. And this will not only fulfill our uh, government's obligation as country's obligation to generate the employment, to go to the C-class, D-class, villages, everywhere, and also be a force to reckon with as far as the overall GDP is concerned and be at number two uh, in, in, the, in, in the world hierarchy in terms of GDP. So I believe that uh, this is what probably you wanted to know. I have gone a little on board uh, with more of uh, my thoughts. So uh, Insights, Mr. Namla, are always welcome because ultimately it is the younger generation which is to enter into the field and once we get the insights from the stalwarts, it helps their mind also, this is my belief, to come into the industry and what to expect out of all of it. And I was reading uh, a newspaper and I don't remember the town, but they said that the uh, highest YouTubers are based somewhere in central India. I don't remember exactly the state, so I'm not quoting it. But they say that the maximum YouTubers are over there and they are making good money out of it. And this is all IT which is contributing. So thoughts, I also feel and I would like to get it substantiated from Mr. Gurmi that apart from tier one, are the two tier and three tier cities also helping the IT industry too much nowadays as, as we are all MSME companies? Yeah, absolutely. Rather, uh, you know, post-COVID, uh, the focus, uh, thanks to the technology, uh, which has enabled uh, the work from home services and, uh, you know, employments, the, actually the, uh, the, the talent is uh, more employable now. The talents which was not able, the companies were able to utilize their services. Now, thanks to the technology, uh, the companies can, are hiring uh, resources from the tier 2 and tier 3 cities. So, you know, there is no boundary, you know, it's a big, as we said, it's a global village uh, these uh, uh, days. Uh, thanks again to the technology which has converted the whole world into a global village. So, eliminating all the boundaries, uh, truly the technology has enabled uh, the growth of tier 2 and tier 3 state cities. Uh, you talk about the zoo. The guy, you know, uh, we all know that the Vibu, yeah. uh, Mr. Vibu, yeah. you know, he's traveled all the way and, you know, how we are in a village, he has set up all the, all the facilities, creating a ecosystem within that village. So that is amazing, you know, and it is uh, really inspiring other companies, other tech uh, entrepreneurs to let, look at the growth of the tier two and tier three cities. And I would, uh, you know, attribute all these advancements and uh, growth to the technology which is really happening, the growth of uh, these tier 2 and tier 3 cities. I agree with both of you because there was one time when we all were more younger and we used to say that we would like to not only study abroad but stay there. Now I see many families and even people, entrepreneurs, as you said, for the world, another one. They want to now come back and settle in. This is where they see the whole growth coming in. And my last concluding question to Sandeep ji, uh, though yes, we have talked about 24, 2024, your upcoming one, the next year is going to be a silver jubilee. Any plans you would like to share, one point or anything, or you would still like to keep under wraps what you want to do in the silver jubilee one, your India soft show and electronic show? Well, the show is progressing and I'm very sure that uh, in the 25th edition that we'll have in year 2025, we will have uh, very high milestones, uh, as you asked, given the hype uh, that the show has. Uh, I believe that the 24 achievement will set very high goals for the council to 
uh, embark on and this 25th edition of the India Soft will really be a game changer especially with the growth that we are seeing in these sectors. Uh, I think that uh, Silver Jubilee will be in true sense uh, a show and a year of great satisfaction because the adulthood as you pointed out would be at, at its real youth yeah. and uh, growth will be really remarkable. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gurmeet Singh, EDSC and Sandeep Narazi, Chairman ESC. Thank you very much for today's show. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you.